On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're going to make my STI handle like a BRZ. Really? Yep. We're making it slow? No, man. And boring? No, and man. And common? No, man. No, this episode, we're going to make Marty's WRX as fast as it could be. We're going to make it live up to its engineered hype. potential. It's hype? Yeah. It, it is overhyped, but we're going to make the hype real. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We are down here in Marty's little shed. We got the hoist. This is the last time we'll be using the hoist. Not ever, but um, for today. But you know, for a little while. Martin, we went to the track recently. We, we took did. the BRZ, we took the WRX. Both of them did well, but we did see that there was a significant difference in 15 years of technology, different kinds of cars, but now we're going to close the gap. We're going to mind the gap, people. We're going to get the performance, potential, of Marty's car and make it like a BRZ. The BRZ walked away from this old uh, old girl in the corners. It was very clear that the corner speed was just crazy in the newer car. Um, and the, I know, it's unbelievable. They handle well. We've been saying that since the beginning. We've also been saying because they're slow, but then again on a track it wasn't slow, so I kind of got to eat my words there. This is really fun to drive and they are fast and they're known for having like go-kart-like handling, handles like it's on rails. Yes, it did in 1999. I hate but we the can... term handles like it's on go... rails. Yeah, and, and a go-kart. Like They're so uncomfortable because you get a broken spine. What we're going to do today is we're going to modify the suspension of this car without touching the shocks and springs. We're going to do everything else that we can to try and improve this thing. We got boxes full of stuff and we're going to do like the internet and we're going to unbox it for y'all. But then we're actually going to do more than just unbox stuff. We, we're going to unbox it then we're going to go and vlog about what we ate for lunch no. and then tell you that next time we might show you something. We do tell you sometimes that next time we're going to show you something, but then we actually do. This time we're going to put... Let's just put this... Let's open the thing. Yeah. All right, Martin. It's like Christmas. It is. But for your Subaru. One of the best bang for buck mods you can do to a car is buy a Golf GTI. That's... He's actually right. And they're really fast. That gearbox is amazing. Um, Front one of the best drive, bang poof. for buck mods you can do to a car that oh. has original suspension to improve the handling is install sway bars. We have covered sway bars before very, very briefly, but it was a long time ago. And this car is the perfect candidate. Is it candidate or candidate? I don't know, Martin. I don't know either. Nor do I care. So what we have is a bunch of white line gear, white line, some Australian made stuff made from Australian made spring steel. Just sounds cool. Spring steel sounds cool. I don't know why. Diff mount in cradle inserts. Yeah. Refer to the website. Yeah. So we've we've got a couple of mods. As, a, as we've been modifying this car, I've been going about the fact that I don't want to put coilovers in it yet. One day, maybe I do. But for now, I really like the way it handles and rides. But Excellent adjustability with coilovers, by the way, because yes. I know everyone's saying maximum adjustability. It's whether you need that maximum adjustability on yep. the street. Some people compromise the comfort of their car yep. so they can get adjustability that, that they won't use on the track. A different story, which means eventually we might get there. Exactly. Back to you, Martin. It's Back also, to the newsroom. It's also, on that point, it's also worth saying that for a long time, adjustable coilovers cost heaps of money. Yeah. And it wasn't as easy and cheap as it now is to go and buy a set of coilovers. Like for our Golf, Mark IV Golf in Germany, what, they were like a few hundred bucks off yeah. eBay. And yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were great for what they were. Um, so in a car this era where I'm trying to keep the original suspension as pure as possible, um, the next best upgrade you can do is get sway bars. Sway bars, also known as anti-roll bars, as stabilizer bars. And now there's a whole lot of scientific, technical nerdery about how these work, which if you're interested in, I suggest you read up on because I will get it wrong if I try and relay it. But essentially, you want the left and right wheel to not have too much difference and you want to tie them together, which keeps the car flatter through corners, which is one of the reasons I was struggling on the track. So we have front and rear sway bars. We've also got a bit of extra gear. Anti-roll link kit. Yep, so there got... the, that's what connects the sway bar to the car. So if you put a big chunky sway bar on, but you use your original mounts, sometimes they flex and then you lose the effect of this. Martin, that is a uh, camber bolts. And yep. here we've got an anti-lift caster kit. Yes, anti-lift kit. So that's the other thing you can do 
is it prevents the wheels from lifting off the ground because if the wheels are on, not on the ground, firstly you're not gripping and secondly you're not going, especially in an all-wheel drive car. That is also a really good bang for buck mod on Subarus. They do suffer from issues with that when you start going faster and faster. So sway bars, any lift kit, diff bushes, and well, that's it. Martin, this is, this is it's impressive. Some nice, it's some nicely made gear, man. This is excellent. Yep, and so there's different levels as well with these of comfort because again, I'm trying to make the car not a race car that you drive on the street. I'm trying to make it a street car you can drive on the track. Uh, so you can also get different grades of bushings to not make them too hard. Cause if you go crazy with this, you can end up with what feels like a race car. Yeah. And you know what? I actually had some recent experience with that with the, uh, when we did the Mark 7 Golf R. Uh, we changed all of the engine mounts to Revo mounts. Mm. Really good, great. Um, there's video showing that, you know, the change in how it moves. But when you're using those kind of hard polyurethane bushes, you do get more vibration in the car. That's just how it works. Things that are softer, they absorb more vibration. So it's really up to you to work out kind of what you want, yep. the performance versus the comfort. So I've just realized that all of this stuff actually says BRZ on it. So that, and I think that, is going with me. Suspension modification is a wormhole you can dive hard and deep into, which can deliver impressive handling gains if you get it right. There are heaps of different options from manufacturers all over the world, which allow you to dial the car in exactly how you want it. It turns out some of that stuff was for the BZ, so good for him, not so useful for my car. We've worked out exactly what we've got, which is a front and rear sway bar, all the mounting bolts and stuff to make that happen, the sway bar links, which connect them to the control arms, and our anti-lift kit, so that is the handling package we're going to be putting in this car to complement the suspension and springs that are already in there. And in a couple of weeks, <laughs> in Probably. a couple of weeks, we are taking the WRX and the BRZ back to the track Going back. for an ultimate track battle of fun and joviality. But there's actually a competition. You know what's interesting about that? I'm going with the same power, you're going with more power, but I'm going with better handling. Hopefully. I know, and it should we... be interesting. And your car was always faster because we could see your car pulling away. Faster, yeah, but, but the track time says it all, doesn't it? I was slower around the track than you. Only by like one second. Still, man, a second. So, that's anyway, a, that's it's going to be interesting to see. And of course, the loser gets to keep their car. What? Their own car. <laughs> Which is like saying the loser loses their car, which is what we normally do, but no one's losing anything this time round. Except for the BRZ, which we're going to auction and put Facebook ads, and for $20 you can buy a ticket. What? Are we no, actually? No way. It's a thing. Sway bars are used by manufacturers to dial in the oversteer and understeer characteristics of the car from the factory. They usually err on the side of caution to make the car predictable and neutral and prevent too many run-ins with curves and gutters. So the penetrant that I'm using today is WD-40 Specialist. They actually have an automotive range with a whole bunch of stuff that you can use in your garage. This one here, as opposed to being like a multi-use product, is designed specifically for nuts and bolts, bearings and fasteners and fittings. So I'm just giving everything a bit of a spray uh, to get everything nicely penetrated before we start, doing a quick bit of research about what goes where and what we got to do, and then we will jump into it. Cool, so I just got one more bolt here, and then this whole thing should just come out. All going well. Donk, donk, and right. donk. She's out. There we go. Looks that like was... someone's someone's already put some sway bar bushes in there, which is not a bad upgrade because these, when they're the rubber rubber ones from the factory, sometimes get a bit squashed and, and worn out. So that would already be an upgrade. Um, the aftermarket sway bar comes with the same kind of thing, uh, but a different size. So you can see straight away, um, it follows the same basic shape, uh, but just the the. Um, stiffness of this is dictated by the size of the actual metal and also you can adjust the mounting points which again changes the way it behaves. Now that kind of stuff is the kind of thing that someone who does wheel alignments who really knows what they're talking about is the kind of person you want to set that up for you. We will set it to whatever it says in the instructions for the most basic to mimic the factory one but then when we get into aligning the car this is where we'll make the decision about just how stiff it is at the front. While this is more or less a remove and reinstall process, your replacement sway bar may have multiple stiffness settings, which is dictated by where you attach the sway bar link. There's also specific ways to install the bolts and washers, so keep an eye out for those also. We've laid the new kit out on the floor next to the old one. You can see these are called eye links, um, not 
eyes like your face eyes, more like the letter I, I guess. Uh, so the front one uses these, which have that little sort of linkage in them. This is the repla replacement ones. They've got like harder bushings in there as well, and they're made out of like a CNC aluminium. Um, what we've also got though, which is interesting, is these grease-free bushes. Now, as I said before, someone's upgraded to poly bushes with the old bar. These do require grease, and as you can see, that hasn't been greased for a long time. It's actually starting to break up already. Um, it is something that you have to do and redo, and a lot of people just forget. Um, the factory ones are rubber, which require less maintenance as well, but they also break down quicker. So uh, this one here, the new bushes, they call it grease-free technology. It almost looks like carpet in there, but it's some kind of Teflon-y, fancy, modern age material, which means zero maintenance and stiffer than the factory ones, which I think is pretty cool. To install the front sway bar, we're going to loosely attach the sway bar end links, putting the bolts and washers in the right order and test fit it to the car. We can then attach the end links to the control arms and finally the sway bar bushes can be bolted on too. We're going to leave everything hand tight for now as we'll be torquing the bolts up when the car's at its normal ride height, not when the wheels are hanging down off the hoist. We can then move on to the anti-lift kit, which is a set of replacement bushes for the rear of the control arms. There's a big 22mm bolt that requires some love from a hammer or a breaker bar, then the 19mm mounting bolts can be whizzed off with a dac dac. The benefit of an anti-lift kit is to improve grip under acceleration, where the front of the car is trying to lift off the ground. This is particularly noticeable when cornering. It's a simple mod and worthwhile if you need to change your front suspension bushes anyway, which is quite common on a car of this era. To install, just remove the old ones, clean and grease the control arm and then pry it into position so the new bush can be installed. We can then hand tighten all the bolts ready to be torqued up when the car is on the ground again. So there it is, front sway bar is in, mad little upgrade, something that you can do yourself in just a few minutes, with a friend is helpful so you can fendoogle some things out of the way. We've also got our cool anti-lift kit which replaces these uh, rear front control arm bushes. Uh, it's also a good time to inspect your other bushes to see if there's any wear and tear on them. You can go poly for them as well, but poly wants a crack cracker, it gets really, the NVH goes through what? the roof. It, um, it, if you put too much Nose polyurethane kids. in the front of it, it'll, you'll start to feel every little twig on the road, which maybe is what you want. A lot of roads aren't that flat, and that gets pretty unenjoyable pretty quickly. But we've left all this a little bit loose. We're going to put so them now, back on. So now, um, we pretty much do the same thing, but totally different, but kind <laughs> of the same thing. Um, back here. So these ones here, can you see these big C -links. rubber links here? They're called sea links because they, they look like C's are going to be replaced by a little robot man. So you can see that basically. So this bar will come out, undo that, undo that, plonk those ones in, then go chop some BRZs. And then you can proudly say to someone, I chopped a BRZ. With my iconic 90s two-door Turbocharged yeah. all-wheel drive <laughs> STI. The rear sway bar is the same process as the front, but one thing to be aware of is that the sway bar is trying to even up the droop of the independent rear suspension, so it's going to fight you when you try and move it into place. One way around this is to jack up the wheel to relieve some of the pressure, but be mindful of pinching hands or fingers in between parts with tension on them. The new rear sway bar is thicker and adjustable, but we'll leave it to the wheel alignment expert to decide which setting the rear one needs to be on, but we'll set it on the softest for the trip there. The effectiveness of the rear sway bar is usually dictated by how thick it is and how stiff it is, and that affects how these wheels are tied together. This is also adjustable, so it's fatter than the factory one, but it's also adjustable, I think they call this like a blade type adjustment where you can choose a different hole on here based on how stiff you want it to be. Um, that's the softest one, medium and hardest. We're going to start on the softest and work our way up when we wheel align it, but we'll be able to test drive it like this and just see what happens.
Uh, we've just worked out that it's way easier if you put the top in first and then the bottom. Uh, we learned the hard way, so you don't need to. Last episode, when we put the gearbox in and specifically the new exhaust, um, the O2 sensor location didn't work anymore because on the factory dump, it's right up the top. There's a plug that hangs out right under the intercooler there and it fits straight in. Uh, the sensor was also a bit how you're going and I may or may not have sold the exhaust with the old sensor in it, but we won't talk about that. What I have done though, is got myself an NTK brand new factory replacement sensor, uh, which looks a little bit like that has the Subaru plug on one side. Now that would plug straight in and bolt straight in if my exhaust was standard, but it's not. Uh, so I'm gonna replace this one. All I did was just throw a old broken wideband oxygen sensor on there for now, in the meantime, so I didn't have a mad exhaust leak because exhaust leaks on Subarus sound rubbish, as we've learned. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a factory replacement sensor for now, so the factory computer is happy. Now this only really matters on crews anyway. The computer's not that smart. It's not constantly really monitoring it for load related stuff. It's just when you're on the highway to try and make sure it's not using too much fuel. Um, so that can go in like that, which is now installed. All I've got to do now is extend this plug. So the easiest way is just to hack it in the middle and throw in three wires and then plug it straight in, which is going to be the best way to sort this out. Did you tell everyone it's because you accidentally sold your old one with the old exhaust? I just said that, yeah. You did? I, okay. Yeah. Good. I didn't want to. I didn't need to remind you about it. But you kind of did. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to re-solder this new bit of wire onto the original plug for the O2 sensor. These are traditionally quite hard to solder because the wire that's in there and the sheathing that's on it is meant for real high temp application. So you've got to get a lot of heat into it to warm your soldering on up. This is Roby's portable one, which is really cool. 200 minutes on a uh, five amp hour battery, which is pretty cool. And like really convenient in the fact that it is portable. You can stick it in your car and use it without having an extension cord running everywhere or if you're out on site somewhere. Better than gas ones too, in my opinion, because gas ones have those exhausts that sort of come out the side. If you put them down the wrong way, they'll burn through whatever you put them on. Um, so yeah, pretty awesome piece of kit takes only less than a minute to warm up and then you can get straight into it. There's nothing quite like an impending track day or battle to get all the loose ends of your build tied up. On the list is this O2 sensor as well as a controller to properly put to use the adjustable centre diff in the newer STI gearbox we installed recently. My older car has no ECU or smarts to run it so I'll need to install a brain to run the gearbox. New O2 sensor is in and has nothing to do with handling mods whatsoever but now the car will run properly with no check engine lights. So next we're going to drop it down. And then tighten everything up, Martin. Yes. So we've, we're going to drop it down onto some bricks because Rexies should all be on bricks at least once in their life, or probably have been. Uh, but we're going to drop it down to so a bit more height. We're going to leave it on the hoist, but sort of load the wheels up so that all the suspension is loaded into its correct angles and then tighten everything that we've done. If you can fit tools under your car with it off jacks and on the ground, then you're all good to go. If not, find a method to get the weight of the car onto the wheels, but make sure you've got something to support it so it can't roll away. Then tighten up the nuts and bolts using a torque wrench if you can fit it. So I just dropped the car down and noticed, dropped the STI down, and then noticed that these sort of um, end links were a bit on the piece. Yeah, I did notice before we installed them that they're around about 10 or 15 mils shorter. You can probably see, if I put this next to that, see that height difference? It's quite significant. Anyway, it... Um, doesn't work. Turns out that STI ones are different from WRX ones. So these, so we've put STI ones on your WRX and that's no, why it doesn't? No, no. WRX ones have accidentally been put on my STI. That's oh, what's happened. So there is a difference. It almost proves that the fact that this is an STI. Wow. Even though it's a pain I'll, in the I'll butt. I'll pay that, Martin. And we're going to have to do it again. Actually, it's fine. We literally just change these and then drop it down. The back's all tightened up. Yep. Um, we're going to get the right links and chuck them in. And then that side of everything will be done. I've also got some other little bits and pieces that we're going to use on the wheels. We got some barbecue egg rings. So these ones are used when you're cooking at home. You basically chuck them on the barbie, a little bit of oil keeps your egg contained. Who doesn't want to keep their egg contained rather than just spraying it out across a tray? Hub centric rings, we're going to put them on uh, put because them on. we have to and because we haven't before. Exactly. Uh, I had to order these to because I didn't know exactly what size the inside bore of the wheel was and what size the WRX ones is. Lucky you can look up a lot of that info and then get the right spaces. So we're going to whip the wheels off while we've got it on the hoist, put our uh, hub centering rings on, and then stick our wheels back on and then wait for our sway bar end links to arrive, which could be, who knows. Let's do it later. Man. 
Factory wheels almost always have a matching centre bore on the wheel and hub face so they're perfectly centred when attached. It's a good idea to get machined metal rings like these ones that do the same job as the factory but work on aftermarket wheels like mine. They're cheap and good for peace of mind. They're available in heaps of sizes so just measure the centre bore of your wheel and the matching face on your hub. So these are the sway bar links that were wrong because they are for a WRX and not a not a what? Are you going to make me say I'm it? I'm going to make you say it. It's an STI, people. <laughs> it actually is. We have proof because inside the pouch of this Mighty Carmods hoodie shipped worldwide. Click now, there. Inside the pouch. Um, this here is the sway bar link kit that we need. And, well, it doesn't say on here, but this is for an STI. And as you can see, actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do, what's an unboxing when it's not in a box called It's Martin? called an unbagging. An, uh, <laughs> Which sounds a bit rude. It's like a tea bagging, but the opposite. Um, this here, like, it looks totally different. So yeah. this here is for an STI. This here is for a WRX. That is proof. I'll, I'll admit it. I'm man enough to say it. I was wrong about that so we're gonna whack him in we're gonna drop the car down on bricks we're gonna tighten everything up and go and get a wheel alignment that's yes. the plan in the in the sti in the sti he said it All the mad new suspension mods have been successfully installed, so now I've got to quickly get my DCCD controller working and then I can head out for a wheel alignment. Doing some last minute preparations on the STI, I've taken the intercooler off and the reason for that is I've got this iWire DC, DCCD Pro Spider Controller. Um, oh, it says MCM on it, cool. Uh, basically these guys make like a plug and play kit that allows you to adapt the newer transmission that has the DCCD and the adjustable center diff into this older car. Now, some of the Japanese ones did have it, um, but mine is not a Japanese model, so therefore I do not have it and I've got nothing. Uh, the cool thing about this is it allows me to actually control the behavior of the center diff, um, which is pretty awesome. I've got the roller thing that allows me to roll it back and forth, and I've got the actual switch to turn it on and off, otherwise it's just automatic. This has a G sensor. Um, it comes in a kit, really good, clear instructions on how to do it all. Um, so that's going in the car. It's pretty specific to Subarus and it's pretty specific to this kind of swap. So not really something that I'm gonna make a whole bunch of Nissan owners sit through, but uh, all I really have to do is replace this plug, which needs to be a six pin plug on the side of the transmission and then run the wiring through to the car, plug it all in and hopefully I'll have mad center diff adjustable DCC Dinas. With everything installed, I'm on my way to get a wheel alignment. The car already feels great to drive, so I'm excited to see how good it is when it's finished. One of the most important factors of any suspension mod is getting a good wheel alignment. Not all wheel alignments are the same. You can go down to your local tyre shop and the computer will flash green when it's at its factory setting, which is fine for a street car that's factory, but if you want to do something more advanced, go to a racetrack, set your car up specifically, you've got to go and see someone with a bit more expertise. And that's where we're going, mate. Yeah. I'm good. Good, see you mate. I've come to see Peter at Road Race Performance. He's been racing for decades and knows a thing or two about setting up cars for the track. Take one drop link off and you take all the preload out of the sway bar, then put it back on so that when the car is in a static position, you've got no preload on the sway bar. Ah, good, okay, awesome. Whereas the standard drop links, you can't do that. The STI is left in his capable hands to be set up, ready for our track battle. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Enjoy your day. I will. Walking home. So, guys, we've just dropped our cars off um, to get a wheel alignment, and now we're eating breakfast. And what we're actually eating here is a half-half cheese and meat pizza. This is a Lebanese-style pizza. I just got asked if I was Lebanese. I said, no, my best mate growing up was Lebanese. What a legend. So I ate a lot of Lebanese food as a kid. So I am perfectly positioned to tell you that this is a good pizza. Now, when you modify... Have you had, sorry, mate, have you had a half-cheese, half... 
What, is that half cheese, half meat? Is that like a standard Lebanese fare? I don't know. I'm not Lebanese. Oh, to okay. ask someone who is, they'll know for sure. All I know is, this is... Ah, oh, so tasty. Is so it good? good. Oh, man. All Lebanese food's amazing. I got some olive on there, man. Yeah, man. Yours looks very healthy. Well, a bit healthier than mine, but still cheesy. Amazing. 